we're going to take a look at section 3.8, um, and this is exponential functions. And um, these are functions that aren't linear. You know, we've dealt with stuff that we graph them, they make a straight line, and they keep on increasing by the same amount. And what we're going to do then is we are going to uh, deal with a different type of function, things that grow differently. So let's do a little bit of analysis on these tables. Let's start with that table right there. And um, I can tell that this part here is increasing by one. So x as x goes up by one, something happens with y. And if I'm not sure, I might go like, well, this goes plus six, this goes plus 12, this goes plus 24. It, it does seem to be a pattern, but it's not changing by like a consistent amount. It's not changing by the same amount each time. So that doesn't help me a whole lot uh, in this case. So instead of thinking about addition, maybe it's changing by multiplication. So 6 times what is 12? You know, if I didn't just see that it was times 2, I could think of, um, I could just go 12 divided by 6 on my calculator, and it would, and it would give me the right answer. Um, 12, yeah, 12 times 2 is 24. 24 times 2 is 48. 48 times 2 is 96. So this seems to be doubling each time. So a couple things to notice is I start at 6 and I'm multiplying by 2 each time. And so what I want to do now is write some sort of equation for it. So I'm going to start with saying y equals 6 at some point. Like that's where it starts. So I have that part. And I'm, this is not the whole equation. I'm going to have another part here as well. And notice that it's times something. 6 times something. If I could clean this up a little bit. I'm noticing that like 12 is 6 times 2. So notice I multiplied by 2 once get to the 12. And this was just this was just 12 uh, times 2. Right? But the 12 came from a 6 times 2. So I could kind of walk this back and think of it from the start 6 times 2, which is the one before, times 2. And then the third one then would be the one before, 6 times 2 times 2, times 2. And you start to see a pattern here. Uh, there's three 2s multiplied together to get the third term. There's four 2s multiplied together, 3, 4, to get the fourth term. So if I was like out at the 10th term, it would be where I started, and then times 2 ten, 10 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is ridiculous. 9. 10. I'm not going to write 2 times itself uh, 10 times that way. I'll just take, care, um, take advantage of that exponent notation. And I will just say, this is just 6 times 2 to the 10th power. Right? 2 times itself 10 times. So that means this multiply by itself 4 times, or multiply it by itself 3 times. Uh, yeah, or multiply it by itself 2 times, or multiply it by itself 1 times, or multiply by itself zero times. So that's interesting. Six to the zeroth power. Six to the zeroth power. Uh, sorry, six times zero to the first power. Anything to the first power except zero is one. That's just the relationship. So that is a six. So notice I have this uh, relationship where if I knew the x value, the x value is three, the y value is six times two, to that power. So basically, y is 6 times 2 to the x, whatever step I'm on. So that's how I can write these exponential functions. Um, and if I were to graph it, this starts at 6, and then what happens is it gets steep really fast. Like each time x goes up by 1, um, each time, yeah, x goes up by 1, y basically doubles. So like this distance right here if x is 1 here, got doubled, and it gives me that. And then if I go over one more, this distance right here got doubled. And if I could draw better, it would be right on it. So let's do analysis on, on this one over on this side, and maybe we could get the same thing. So I see where it starts, starting at 10. Let me take a look at how it's growing. This is adding 1 each time, so good, straightforward. This it's not changing by addition, right? Because that's plus 20, that's plus 60. Nope. 
but it is changing by multiplication. It looks like it's times three each time. So I could go through the same um, argument that I went by over here, but I know it's going to be the same result. I, I know that it starts at 10, and then, and I wrote it with the with the point over here for multiplication, but some, I'm usually going to write it with parentheses, and it's multiplying by 3 each time x increases by 1. So my general form for exponential functions is y equals a times b to the x where a is, we could think of it as the start. It's basically when, when x is 0, y is a, right? When x is 0, y is a. And b is the multiplier. It's what it's growing by. And I should say what it's changing by, because sometimes it might not be growing. It might be shrinking. It might be getting smaller. So I'm going to erase real quick. And let's write a couple of uh, exponential rules. So if I look at these two rules, um, and I want to compare them to each other, I, I see a couple things. There's my start for the first rule. There's my start for the second rule. There's my multiplier for the first rule. There's my multiplier for the second rule. So I can say a couple things about these. Um, if I just make a table, I know that, like, for this one, it started at 0, 7. And then every time this goes up by 1, this would be times 3. So, like, the next thing would be 21 and so on. This one starts at 100. And as x goes up by 1, it doubles. So, like, 200, 400, etc. times 2 each time. So, this equation is growing faster than that equation, right? It's tripling each time instead of doubling. But this equation has a higher starting spot than this equation. So like this will start out larger than that one, 100 versus 7, 100 versus 7. This one will start out larger than that one, 100 versus 7. But this, since this one's growing faster, eventually this one will get so big that it'll surpass this one because it's growing faster, right? Eventually it has to pass it. There's a so there's a, a good comparison for us. So I want to write another one. So sometimes we might have an equation that looks like this, like p of t. That just means the population at times t. That's essentially a y. We could have something like 1500, 1.8 to the t. And notice that like the exponent here is written outside the equation, uh, sometimes, I'm sorry, outside of the parentheses, sometimes it's inside, sometimes it's outside. It means the same thing. If I analyze this a little bit, there's my start. So this would be like a population that starts at year, at year zero with 1,500 people. And notice my multiplier is 1.8. It's growing by 1.8. Let me think about that as a percentage. Um, one hundred percent is point one as a decimal. You know, fifty percent is point five as a decimal. So one point eight is one hundred and eighty percent as a decimal. So notice a hundred percent. If this was just a one, it would be staying the same all the time. Times one times one times one. It's not. This isn't growing by a hundred and eighty percent. This is 180% of the thing. So this is actually growing by 80%. So that multiplier uh, tells us that it's an 80% increase every year. Let me think of another one. Um, if I had something like, starts with 75,000 people, 1.23 um, to the power of t. So my 1.23, that is 123 percent. So this would be increasing by 23% each year. So it's getting uh it's getting larger by 23%, not 123%. Another example. 15,000 people now. 
uh, 0.95 to the t. So notice these ones were both greater than 1, like 1 point something, 1 point something. This one's less than 1. So if I think about the 0.95, that's 95%. This is not growing by 95%. This is 95% of that. This is actually shrinking. So just like here, I had this, this 1.23, the 123%. I took off the 100%. Same thing with this 95%. If I, if I, take, if I think of it in terms of 100%, it's actually 5% less than 100%. So this is actually decreasing by 5%. But all of these are in terms of like 1 or 100%. How far below 100% is it? It's decreasing. How far above 100% is it? It's increasing by that percentage. So if I ended up with a percentage of 0.87, and some multiplier out here, and notice that I know it's decreasing, that's less than 1. 100 minus 87 is uh, <laughs> 13. So this would be decreasing by 13%. Think of everything in terms of 1. Think, think of everything in terms of, of 100%. So you'll see some problems like um, in the year 2000, the population of a certain city was uh, 300,000. And then we could say it's growing or increasing uh, by 9% a year. What would the population be in, let's say, 2015? So there's a couple things going on here. First off, we know where we started. So we know that, I'm just going to write an equation. Um, at time zero, which is the year 2000, which is the year 2000, there's 300,000 people. It's growing by 9%. So if it's growing by 9%, that means my multiplier is 1.09, right? Like it's 109% of what it was. So my multiplier is 1.09. And that happens every year if I let X be my number of years. And so if I start at 2015, I'm sorry, to start at 2000, and then I want to know how many people in 2015, that's a change of 15 years. You just go 2015 minus, minus 2000 if I don't see that, that minus that. So that means what I want to evaluate is this 300,000 times 1.09 uh, to the 15th power. Because I want to multiply that 1.09 um, 15 times, right? One for each year. So let me grab my calculator, turn it on. So three, 
hundred thousand times uh, 1.09 and to get the to a power I'm going to use this button this caret sometimes it'll have an x to the y button and that was to the 15th and so notice it's uh wow over over a million one million ninety two thousand seven forty four and and I'm I could round that four up to a five I'm not going to use the decimal because you know 0.7 people shouldn't shouldn't make too much sense uh, let's do another example like that there we go some sort of setup uh, in the year 2000 let's just do a different population smaller smaller town 15,000 um, and instead of growing at 9% let's have it be uh, shrinking or decreasing by uh, let's say 8% a year and then we want to know what the population then would be in uh, Let's say 2020. Wow, it might be really small. Um, if it's decreasing by 8%, that means it's losing 8% a year. So if I think of my 100% minus 8%, that gives me a 92. So that's my multiplier, 0.92. So I'm starting with 1,500 people. I'm multiplying by 0.92 every year. And instead of an X here and, and a Y, it might sometimes be written as the population at time t for t. This means this means the same thing. So 1500, uh, sorry, 15,000 um, times 0.92 to the power t. And in this case, that's 20 years. That's a 20 year change. So it would be this. So let's see if I can remember all those. Uh, 15,000 0.92 to the 20th. So 15,000. That's being multiplied by 0.92 to the 20th. So that pot, it would be down to just uh, 2,830 people. That's a that's a big decrease, right? It's but it's over 20 years, using five, losing 5% 5 each year. So there you go. So there's going to be three types of questions in the assignment. Uh, one of them this type. One of them um, doing some comparisons. And then writing those uh, writing those equations from from tables. So, good luck. Message me if you have any questions.